This video is about commitments. Commitments are a building block in cryptography that are used for various cases. They are a digital analog of a safe. Let us give an example. Here we have Watson and Sherlock. Sherlock wants to play the game called, Think of a Number. He tells Watson to secretly think of a number, without revealing it. Then, Sherlock guesses the number and he wants to check whether he guessed the number correctly. However, both parties can be dishonest so they want some guarantees. Sherlock wants that Watson should not be able to change his initial choice. Watson on the other hand, wants that Sherlock cannot know his initial choice. How can they do that? This is a typical application for a safe. Watson takes the safe, writes his number on a letter which he puts inside the safe, and closes the safe with the key. Watson gives the closed safe to Sherlock, but not the key. Now he has committed to the number. Watson cannot change it anymore, since the safe is in Sherlock's hands, but also Sherlock cannot know Watson's number, because Sherlock cannot open the safe. Later, after Sherlock guesses a number, Watson gives the key to Sherlock so that he can open the safe, and check what the initial committed value was. The digital analog of this protocol is called a commitment scheme in cryptography. More formally, a commitment scheme is a protocol between two parties who do not necessarily trust each other. We have two phases, the commitment phase, in which the first party commits to a value, M, by creating a commitment, C, and a secret key, D. He only sends the commitment, C, to the second party, and keeps the committed value, M, and the secret key, D. The second phase is called the reveal phase, in which the first party reveals the committed message, M, and the secret key, D. Using the key, D, the second party verifies whether the committed message, M, corresponds to the commitment, C. The guarantees that the parties want, are given as properties of the protocol. The protocol must be correct, which states that the verification process of an honest commitment should always succeed. And then we have the properties that we mentioned also in our example. Watson wants the protocol to be hiding. Hiding means that Sherlock cannot extract any information about the committed value before the reveal phase. Sherlock wants the protocol to be binding. Binding means that Watson is not able to change the commitment after the commitment phase. Is there a simple way of creating commitment schemes? How about using cryptographic hash functions? A cryptographic hash should be one way. This means that it is easy to compute y as a function h of x, but it is hard to find an x given y. In addition, cryptographic hash functions are collision resistant, meaning that it is hard to find two different values x and x prime that evaluate to the same y. How can we use a hash function to create a commitment scheme? Say Watson wants to commit to a message m. The protocol goes as follows. Watson chooses a random value, r, concatenates, r, with the message, m, and then computes the hash function h of m concatenated with r. The result, c, is the commitment. Why do we need a random number? Take a moment to think about it. The main reason is to hide the message, no matter how short and simple the message may be. For example, if one wants to commit between choices yes and no, then it would be easy for Sherlock to just hash both, yes and no, and see what the commitment value is. In the reveal phase, Watson will send both the message, m, and the random number, r, and Sherlock can then recompute the hash function. This makes the protocol correct, if both parties behave honestly, the verification process will always succeed. But what about hiding and binding properties? The main argument comes from collision resistance of hash functions. To change the commitment, one needs to find a collision. In principle, it is possible to find another input so that you have a collision. But if the hash function is cryptographic, then this is computationally too expensive, that's why we say that the protocol is computationally binding. What about the hiding property? Hiding is given by the one-way property of hash functions. Given the commitment, it is hard to invert the function. It is, however, not precise to say that the protocol is computationally hiding. For example, Sherlock might learn that Watson thought of an odd number. This is not inverting the hash function, but still Sherlock might be able to get partial information about the message. Hence, typically this construction is heuristically secure, but to prove the hiding property, the particular hash function needs to have additional properties. What about the case where Sherlock and Watson are computationally unbounded? Can we come up with a commitment scheme?
now we present Pedersen commitments. They use the discrete logarithm. The idea is to use the computation g to the power of m in a group, and rely on the fact that computing the discrete logarithm is hard. However, similar to the hash function example, we also need a random number in the computation. To do this, Sherlock and Watson agree on a random number y first. Important at this step is that Watson does not know the discrete logarithm of y. Once they agree on this public number, in order for Watson to commit to a value, he chooses a random number r, computes y to the power r, and multiplies the result with g to the power of m. The resulting value is the commitment. After Watson reveals the message, m, and the random number, r, Sherlock can redo the same computation and verify that the committed value is correct. So the protocol is correct. The protocol is however only computationally binding. This can be shown by a reduction. One can show that changing the commitment is just as hard as computing the discrete logarithm of y. Why is that the case? Say we have value m, m prime, r, and r prime, such that this equation holds. Then we can compute the expression m minus m prime, times, r prime minus r to the power of p minus 2. This can be done efficiently, with square and multiply algorithm. This expression is in fact x, under modulo p minus 1. But, this means that we can compute the discrete logarithm of y efficiently, and we reach out to a contradiction. Why is this expression x? This can be seen, by showing that g to the same expression is y. First, we can rewrite the first equation as shown here. Then we substitute the g to the power m minus m prime, with y to the power of r prime minus r. Now we simply multiple r prime minus r expression, and we get in the exponent r prime minus r to the power p minus 1. According to the little Fermat theorem, this exponent is exactly 1, for a prime p, and as such the expression simplifies to y. Let us go to the hiding property. One can show that the protocol is perfectly hiding. The main reason for this is that for any m prime, there exists an r prime that evaluates to the same commitment. Note that this is not in contradiction to the binding property. Such an r prime is hard to find, here we are merely arguing about its existence. This means that if you see a commitment C, then there is no way for you to tell which is the committed value, since all of them could be the committed value, and all of them are equally likely. There is a one-to-one -one mapping from the message space to the random numbers that lead to the same commitment. Such a mapping can be easily seen by substituting y with g to the power of x, and reducing it to this linear equation. Here we can see that one can compute for any m prime a new r prime that has the same commitment. But why compromise? Can we have both perfectly hiding and binding commitment schemes? We now show that such a commitment scheme cannot exist. Assume that a commitment scheme is perfectly binding. This means that Watson should not be able to change the commitment even if he is computationally unbounded. This can be the case if and only if there is only a unique value m that can be committed to c. But this means that if Sherlock has the committed value c, and if he is computationally unbounded, Sherlock can simply brute force all possibilities and find this unique m. Thus the scheme cannot be perfectly hiding. Let us summarize what we learned in this video. In this video we have seen commitments, which are the digital analog of a safe. Given a message m, commitment schemes produce a commitment, c, and a secret key, d, that is used to verify the commitment. Commitments are protocols between two parties who do not trust each other and they run in two phases. In the first phase, the commitment phase, only the commitment, C, is made public. At a later stage, in the reveal phase, the original message and the secret key, are made public. We have seen two examples of commitment schemes. The first example was based on hash functions, and the second example, Pedersen commitments, was based on the hardness of the discrete logarithm. Thank you for watching this video.